Hello everyone and welcome back for another VOD review. We have a bunch of interesting matches to happen over the weekend. Obviously, we're getting towards the back end of the regular season. Some teams, and especially the East, are done and dusted with all of their regular season matches. In the East, we have the Hongzhou Spark, who are waiting for the winner of the Chengdu Hunters versus the Guangzhou Charge. I think I said that right. I might have fucked up some words there. But hey! Moral of the story is Seoul and uh, Philadelphia Fusion, the two teams that we are looking at today, are completely done with their matches. They have locked in their path for the playoffs. And we had an interesting match that was actually played on LAN uh, very recently. Zest is out for this one with a, uh, an arm issue. It came out in the post-game interview that apparently he just fell on it in the car park or something like that. It is not a cast. It, he has not broken it. Everything should be fine, so hopefully we'll see him in the playoffs. But Carpe stepped in, actually, and performed quite well in these playoffs. So we're going to have a look at both these teams in this uh, silly eastern region. Uh, the Seoul Dynasty uh, for this match were coming off of a loss to the Hongzhou Spark, who were the worst in this stage, but Seoul were the best, but lost to Hongzhou Spark. And if that doesn't sum up everything that's fucking going on in the east, I don't know what will. Uh, so they're, they've been a little all over the place. Primarily, they've been playing a lot more Winston than uh, the West. We even get a little bit of rush here from Philly off the rip. Um, but it was actually cool to see Carpe come into this lineup with the injury from Zest and perform at quite a high level. So uh, we'll have a look at this one. Enjoy this one. Um, neither of these teams are going to play in this meta again. But I think it's sort of interesting to look at like sort of the, both, the form of both of these teams. I am surprised that Philly came out on Rush. Rush has not been a good comp for almost anyone. Uh, I don't... Has anyone else really played Rush this stage? Chat, help me out. Why do I feel like London tried to play it in like the first day and then like never did it again? And then like Dallas Fuel counted it with like a Junker Queen. So it, it was definitely a weird look for Philly to play this. Uh, it gets some success, so... Oh, MN3 goes down. They're, interestingly enough, uh, a really cool thing that I think doesn't exist as much in the West because less Sombra's played, but there's a lot of mind games that go on in the Eastern region with like Sombra v Sombra of like, they find their translocator, so then they kill their translocator and move to a new spot and then try and find their new translocator and everyone's just hunting down everyone. Uh, it's, it's a weird look. Uh, from both teams, but honestly, this is where all the best Sombras are. You know, they love to play Sombra in the East, along with Winston, so. London ran on Lee Jung Night Market, yeah. MN3's translocator location in uh, Nepal is abysmal, really? All right, we'll have a look. Does MN MN3's usually the Sombra player for Philly, right? Even when Zest is in the lineup? I think so, right? <laughs> he just comes out of his translocator and he's just there. Hey, dude, he's gotta be careful. He's just there, Prophet spawning. They like to play Sojourn a lot. Yeah, they, they, that's pretty much been a staple throughout the entire season. Like, get MN3 under hit scan. Get him on that Ash. Get him on that Sojourn. Uh, let's see how he gets value from this EMP. There's all, they have lost a lot of time trying to make this work. Soul are just kind of rolling right now. Aim got with the Coalescence, though. Gets three? Oh, okay. Soul did save a lot of their ultimates though, so they should be able to close this one out even with that happening. Proper blade. Surprised he went for the Winston and not the Moira because he saw the Moira fade already, right? Not the greatest blade there from Prophet. Oh, late beat from Vidname. Oh no, Solar dropping the spaghetti chat. 
The spaghetti is being flung all over the floor. Oh no. Oh god. Alright, well, profit on the tracer now. Let's get some fixer pop on this beat. Profit wash, move him to Anna. We do see that. That is true. In this series, we're going to get some profit Anna. Thing of a legend. Oh, that's not great. Good, ta good tar hack target found by Fitz. Iron Man 3 is dead. So, Solar just better when they don't have ultimates. Uh, is that all we learned from this? That would have been a big hack to get off. Oh, that's not great. Oh, damn, that would have been really good if he got the call, but... That actually might be a big deal that he didn't get the call. Dude, Soul have no right losing this round. Like, they really shouldn't lose this round. They have been the... They have had control. They've just got, like, negative value from their ultimates. Can he get the stick on the Vinde? Oh, just too easy for... Oh, wow. For your boy Carpe. Oh, getting a little greedy on that. Dude, like, how is Soul going to win this one? There's no, just no way they, they're going to win this this team fight. Literally, ultimate uh, ultimates are a problem. They were like, oh, we have a rally. Oh, we lost the rally. Good. <laughs> make it make sense. All right, Prophet goes Genji. They're going rush again with the Cassidy. Yeehaw. <laughs> Remember three cast always confusing me. Why not Ash? I guess he likes Cassidy for like the close range. I just don't know if... I, every time I see Cassidy, like Cassidy makes sense. Like theoretically Cassidy should be good. It just... Oh no. Oh no. It just never is good. Like, the grenade just doesn't offer a lot. It feels like he doesn't do enough. Alright. M3 goes over to the Sombra. We got Sun, isn't there? Yeah. It's now, it's now a grenade. Bring back machine gun cast, just the, the fan, the ha hammer legend. Oh. Oh, Prophet. He's good. Oh, that, that was triple dink. Good play by Philly. Why does Prophet play Genji but now not in jokes? Honestly, Prophet has historically had some weird hero choices, but he's the GOAT, so you can't really question him too much. He's obviously such a great player, but I, I, he's definitely done things in the past that make me like, am I wrong? <laughs> Alright, Nano Blade round two gets hacked. Oh, gets the Anna. Yeah, it's okay. Did its job. Oh, 
Because of the jokes. I guess that's true. Like, why he, he wasn't playing Genji because Stalker was playing and he needed to play the Brig. But. Because are you a prophet sim through and through? Yeah. I think anyone who's been watching back since like 2016, 2017 is a prophet simp. If you're not a prophet simp and you ha then you haven't been watching the whole way through. He has been so good for so long and just so flexible. Let's see the CMP head dead. Mm. Mm. Doesn't feel great. Okay. Oh my god, he dropped the beat but didn't save Emma. Uh, uh. Aim God. That was actually so troll by Fixer. Aim God did everything to keep him alive and then he dropped the beat and didn't save Aim God. You want to see some carpe? Alright, let's go. Another fight where Soul uses ultimates and it comes up to their detriment. And then Soul doesn't use ultimates, win the fight. Make it make sense, chat. Oh wow, he is so lucky to be alive. I'm gonna say it, MN3 is not impressing me. He, MN3 is really good at hit scan. His other stuff is a little shaky from time to time, right? Is he just gonna throw a translocator up? Wow, fuck you, Papa, that's why. Right. right. Big turn by Philly. Prophet about to get hacked again. Oh my god, dude. Prophet is just not having a good time. Fitz though? Oh, Fitz, okay. I'm always gonna hate Sombra, dude, get in line. I think everyone hates Sombra except for Sombra players. Even There are even DPS players who play Sombra who hate themselves when they play Sombra. Score update. Oh, thank you. 1 0 to Soul. All right, so we're going to get a Winston Tracer Sombra Mirror again. This is, something, as I said, this is something that uh, NA doesn't play almost at all. So we'd actually be curious to know if these two teams faced who would win. I genuinely think the West composition is better. Like the Lucio Bap Zaya, I think, would just beat this Tracer Sombra, but I'm not 100% sure about that. But like some teams have tried to play Winston and you, it feels like you just get countered by a D.Va. Like you could even play the like D.Va, Zen, Ana shit and I feel like that would count to the Winston. Counter the Winston. Prophet almost got world starred there. The amount of support that these like traces and stuff like that get is kind of insane. Like the teams in the east are playing wins because they know they can get away with it against the rest of the east honestly probably true like if they had their own little meta in that way oh that's a good emp oh good. unable to clean up look at how low everyone on philly is but they just can't clean up the damage
Oh, wow. There's like so many meta levels deep of that. Oh, that is a good primal by Bellatoria. Smurf's doing the same thing in the other back line, though. Oh, damn. He's going to live. That was a good play by Fixer to get that bash out. That should be first point here for uh, Philly. Didn't Prof go off this series? He hasn't played that well just yet, but maybe. Oh, okay. They're going to late rally? I think you pop... No, I guess you don't even need to. I don't really like this commit at all by Soul. This felt very unnecessary and very difficult. Oh, Fitz. Cool running in a straight line. It's also why Charge are giving everyone else so much trouble and they're once truly committed to Zaya. Yeah, like Charge have shown the value of playing the Zaya compositions, right? Crazy shot if he shot that. Oh, close. Iris is actually one health. EMP goes off into the back line from Fitz. Kills aim god. Okay. Philly's got uh, Philly's winning this fight. EMP didn't really get enough value. It only killed uh aim god, I think it was. Prophet's is Pro Prophet only 22 years old? No, he's there's no way Prophet's 22. Isn't this his fifth year of the league? He must be turning 23 soon. Yep, only 22. Well, now I feel old as fuck. Oh god, he's almost born in the 2000s. Hey, we almost have the same birthday. My birthday is November 22nd. We're pretty much the same player. I am starting to get to that age now where I, I like look at, you know, the younger generation and they're on like TV or like even streamers. Like I was watching TwitchCon recently and they're fucking little children walking around TwitchCon, but they're actually not children anymore. They're like 18, 21, you know, it's just crazy. I'm, I'm feeling more like a boomer every single day and I'm only 28. Only LMA? Oh, potato farm. You're, you're looking to get yourself banned. Trying to call me old? I'm already having a crisis over here. I don't, I don't need this. Good EMP. That was a great EMP by Fitz. Are they seriously not going to have any cleanup for that? How? I guess Rally's running for Fixer. I think they had a lot of overshoots. Did they have overshoots when that happened? Rally was still running. You at the tail end of the rally. MN3 gets away. Bellus Rear gets nanoed. Aim God just doesn't die. In a couple of years, there'll be our pros that have never played Overwatch 1. Oh, God. This is like when I played that experimental tournament with uh, Infected, who was like 14. 
He can't, when he Overwatch One had come out and he was in single digits. He was like nine when Overwatch One came out. <laughs> and I was playing a tournament with him, like, oh my god. Isn't Master pretty old? Yeah, Master's like the old, one of the oldest players left in the league. He's like 26. Carried by a toddler. <laughs> Master's 27? Yeah, right. How is he gonna use his nano? Are they gonna nano just nano Winston in? I guess they're not really doing anything. I think they're playing reactively to the EMP, trying to spread out. Oh, so this was actually a really good nano. The only problem is Vidname gets anti'd as he, as the EMP comes out. That's actually so unlucky. So then the nano doesn't get any value for Iris and then Iris just dies as well. So that was a really good die, but a massive nade by Angon. I worry for Soul going to playoffs. Apart from Kickoff Clash, they peaked early in the stage and fallen off at the end. Yeah. So, I don't know. They, they have a talented roster. I think anything's possible for Soul, but obviously, as you said, the writing's on the wall of like what they've been like this season. But I can absolutely see them overcoming that kind of issue. It really comes down to what the meta is. Like, we, we really are going to have no idea until we get closer. Rip, Iris. Oh, this Rio Winston's going going kind of nice right now. You're worried I'm a Chengdu fan? Oh yeah, no, you guys are. If Chengdu gets out of planes, I will be shocked. I'll just say that. Philly finishing with no time in the bank, but getting three three points on uh, Kings Road. Can't be upset. MVP leave coming back. Honestly, it'd be the most leave thing ever. Show up, fuck, knock Chengdu out, and knock Guangzhou out of the uh, the play-ins. Barely show up for LA. How many teams in the East make the playoffs? Four, but there is only one play-in spot that they're playing for. Is it gonna be a break or straight into play-in? So play-ins is gonna happen first, and then there's a break uh, to playoffs. And Plains is currently on the, the current patch that we're playing on right now. Only a week break, yeah, between the West Plains and the playoffs. The Cheng done. Jimmy Revenge arc nearing his completion. This is what they get for not believing in the Jim Meister. Jimmy's redemption arc has actually been incredibly impressive. I don't think I love the Genji here. Like, I don't know. Prophet's Genji just does not seem to find anywhere near as much value as his Tracer. Oh, I meant three nice shot. Quit stalking Angie, honestly, right? Are they just gonna flat nano profit? Is he gonna be able to get anything done with this? Oh! Almost got Palace Rear. A smart nano re engage. Genji's so stupid. Oh, big def uh, deflect. All right, Custer, Jimmy Prophet leave DPS line as a fuck? Of course. Oh, nice blade there from Prophet in the end. Just starting a little slow, but oh, Bellis Rhea's gonna commit that one. I don't know about that, Bellis Rhea. 
Bellator is a genius? No. It, I, it, you trade EMP for Primal. I think you take that. Who do you think sits in that lineup though? I think it depends on uh, the meta at that time. Like, I think Jimmy would be the hard hit scan player in that situation. The Fitz really need to EMP that? It was a danger, like, I think just to guarantee the first point cap, it's worth. Like, you're better off get, you, just spending it to make sure you win rather than holding on to it and then regretting. Many a people have been sad in that situation. He's live. Late beat from Vin name. Not a great beat. Was he just, did he just not have it when he needed it? No, he had it this whole time. I'm surprised he didn't drop it earlier. Fitz goes down, he can't save him. But yeah, I think he needs to be casting it here for Smurf. Otherwise he just not cast it. Yeah, just so late on it. Disappointing. so far by Sol, uh, by Philly. How was Iris on this team? Haven't paid attention to Sol. Iris has been good. Honestly, the Iris creative trade has been very beneficial for both teams. Like, I think creative is playing better on Houston Outlaws, and I think Iris is playing better on, uh, and actually getting playtime on the Sol Dynasty, so. I think definitely a weird trade, but it has been mutually beneficial. I think it just goes to show like certain players like work on good teams. Maybe like they just didn't fit well on this on different teams. Wow, that was great play against the Nano Blade. Yeah, but Creative has been playing very well. He was very good in their most recent match against Dallas on that bat. Yeah, Proffer back over the Tracer. I would rather just see Proffer play the Tracer. I I feel like his Genji has moments, but I feel like he's just a better all-round Tracer. Wasn't Iris amazing to start the year? Yeah. But, like, it felt like Iris was on the bench because they were, they were going to play Lastro over... They played Lastro over Iris on the flex support role, and they would play Lep when they really needed a Lucio. Like, really, really wanted a Lucio, so... I think it's just better to see Iris go to a team in which he's going to get full play. Like, it's, it was kind of interesting how the trade worked. I would love to know why both teams made the trade. But we'll never really know, right? Alright. Sol have ultimate. So if we know anything, Sol will probably lose this fight. Iris was only benched in Jotes. Um, yeah, but that's what I mean by like a hard Lucio meta. Because they want to play Lucio Brig and then Lep on things, so... Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, it was kind of strange for us to see Houston willing to drop Iris. Because I would have said Iris was the better player of those two. But as I said, it's, it's worked out for both. So no complaints. Rally trade here from both teams as they're just sort of posturing. I think one of those teams could have held it for a little bit longer. Ten seconds remaining. This ends now. Nano Vinde. EMP. Oh, wow. That's a lot of damage. MN3 though, yeah, this, this was an expensive fight for Sol, but they should get across the line. That was literally a 5 0 fight for Sol. Which is okay, but it's going to cost them because they're going to need to. Is this just going to switch back? Okay, or not. 
Let's see how quickly Fitz can get this EMP, because I think EMP is going to be the big determining factor for this match. Like, if they're going to be able to close it out. Cause uh, Iris felt like the player and is less likely to get a fine from the league. Yeah, true. But it's only Lastro who's, li who's likely to get a fine from the league. This SBD over there. That was not a great primal by Bellis Rhea. Oh, that was not a great TP from Fitz. That's also a lot of time, right? Like by having that death, like it would have been fine if they lost that fight by him dying as well. It's going to be hard for him to get up to this EMP before the fight ends. Yeah, and he's actually going to switch over to the Sojourn, recognizing he's not going to get the EMP again. Titans have the oldest and youngest player in the league, Marcel and King. Really? That's interesting. It's crazy how young our league is. Like, Marcel is the oldest player at 27. Oh, murdered. Oh yeah, Bellasria doing work right now on this map. Bellasria has been good on Winston in this map. Ooh, good aid, but... Yeah. And Philly take the second map. Philly would do just the better team on that map. No, hands down. All right, 1-1. One, one. And then Valorant has top tier players in their 30s. Yeah, like CSGO and Valorant seem to have a lot older players. Smith just turned 18. He's one of the best DPS on the league. And it's crazy how young these kids are and how good they are. Kids, man, they just, they have like, they learn so quickly, but also their ability to just sort of invest all of their time into it. Like I've talked about this before in VOD reviews as well before, where it's like, I think one of the, like people always talk about like, oh, age is like, um... A age is like, oh, your reaction times are going down and that kind of stuff. It's honestly just like life commitment and time commitment in esports of like at some point you get so old that you're kind of like, ah, maybe I should do something else with my life or like even though even though you're successful, it's not enough success that I think it uh, you can do it forever. And that's one of the reasons I retired. You know, I was just getting old. I wanted to do something else. So. And while, like, you consider, like, a 17, 18, 19 year old, like, if they can go pro in esports, that's the fucking dream right there, right? Like, they don't have these, like, life commitments. They don't have relationships that they're having to commit to, like, seriously. There's, like, they have a lot of freedom. They have a lot of time. So, it's generally one of, in my opinion, one of the big factors of why it's a young person's game, a lot of esports. Watch Prophet's Anna. Oh, yes. Sorry, good shot. I forgot that Prophet has switched over to the Anna. Um, I, we don't really know why this happened. Uh, I think a lot of us seem to... I theorize that this is just giving Stalker some experience on stage. Like, this match doesn't really matter to Solo in the grand scheme of things. Get Stalker on the stage, get him some reps. Uh, and I don't know why Prophet... Instead of benching Prophet, I don't know why they didn't just play Vinde Mana. Why not? Hey, I guess. Autumn Lees, thank you very much for five months. Phoenix Kona, thank you for the two months as well. Prophet is allergic to the bench. It's gonna start those rumors. Who who was the rumor? Um, who was it on the Violet? There, there were rumors that obviously just like stupid speculation, but that uh, Violet had a contract in his clause that he had to play every map, or like had to play like once a match. Maybe Prophet has the same thing. Although Vindame's impounded, yeah, it makes no sense why they're doing this. They they would have been just fine with Vindame my Iris on. Carpe cleans up this map. I can't look at that, sorry. I'm I'm too busy watching Prophet. I remember that was silly, but I still pedaled it, yeah. So that's like pretty much all of Reddit with any take. I understood it was wrong and it was silly, but I decided to run with it anyway because it's funny. No, no, Diva EMP. Real talk, though. Something that I am very surprised about is that n almost none of the our teams are going for the Nano Sombra strat. 
I feel like the Nana Sombra strat is legit, but maybe it doesn't work as well in in Al, but it's fucking crazy how how good that uh oh nice sleep. Uh it's kind of crazy how much damage a Nano Sombra does with an EMP. It does double EMP damage. I don't know if it does double, it like does the it gives it the damage boost though. But yeah. Easy win for the Prophet Anna. Wait. Wait. Yeah, yeah, easy win for the Prophet Anna. Oh God, no. E e easy. E e easy win for the for the Prophet Anna. Oh no. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, Prophet, I'm gonna need you to look alive on this Anna. He's been okay. He's he's been getting he's honestly been getting the flex support experience in Overwatch 2, which is try and keep your team alive as soon as you step forward, get fucking world starred by a Sombra or a Sojin. Are you guys crossing? Like, what's the what's the play here? Smurf's kind of like looking at Prophet to see if he's gonna commit. They're kind of like baiting a dive. Oh, then Prophet's gonna die. Oh no! All right, big EMP, big carpe down. Oh, this was not a good attack by Soul. This was not great. Ooh, okay. It's fine. It's fine. It'll work on defense, right, guys? Ready for battle. Ready for battle. It's fine. It, 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 they're more of a defensive side of team. Uh, Prophet's a defensive Anna. Profit on Anna kind of sus. It, this feels very unnecessary. This feels like one of those situations where people think it would be good to sub someone in to get experience and then it just goes terribly wrong and makes everyone feel bad. Oh my god, he just walked into that right click angle. What is the most OP comp in Al? I think right now it would be the Lucio Bap Zaya comp. If I was saying as of right now what I thought the most OP comp was. Yeah, he doesn't look super comfortable in the Ana. He's kind of just running around permanently healing his teammates, but he's not really doing too much. Not getting any damage in. Is Bab good with any other comps? I think Bab's actually in a really good spot right now. Oh, rip. Still gets hacked. He Bab just does so much healing. It's kind of crazy. The only problem with Bab is that he's quite sustainable to. Oh. Not a bad name. I think it's time to hang that one up, Sol. I, I I think we I think we I think we move on from that one. Ready for I think we I think we get uh profit back onto the DPS. Vidne back onto the support. Oh, Alright, I like the way we think. I like the way we think. That, that kind of like reminds me of like the grandma meme of you know how there's like that person like helping the grandma and Prophet being like, I can play Anna! <laughs> 
<laughs> the person like, of course you can, but let's go back to DPS, honey. <laughs> Step on me. Oh. Honestly, I was really impressed with Carpe's performance on the Tracer. Like, obviously, we've pretty much only seen him play Hitscan throughout this year, but his, his Tracer looks kind of nice. Okay, he's dead. But other than that, so uh, Solo actually playing the... Uh, this is the composition that someone was saying, what's the most OP composition? This is the comp that like the Gladiators, Dallas Fuel, Houston Outlaws were all playing and sort of the, the meta that everyone says became incredibly prominent towards the end of uh, like going into this weekend worth of scrims. It's really hard to dive. Like the problem with playing against this comp is it's very hard to kill anyone. The most killable target is the Baptiste, but if he gets bubbles and he gets protected by the rest of his team, there's just a lot of damage and a lot of support, and you can't... They just sort of, like, out-sustain, and that sort of goes back on how good the, uh, the shift is, as you just saw, for the Baptiste. If you get below half health, you just press that shift, or anyone gets below critical health, and then you just press shift, and everyone gets all their health back. And with, you know, like, a Diva Sombra Tracer, they actually don't have a lot of burst damage. It's a lot of, like, consistent poke damage. So I think it, it actually works really well against this style of like D.Va, double flex support, uh, meta and why people have been playing it almost everywhere. Do you like Tracer or Genji? I prefer, I think it depends on what I'm going up against. I think against the Tracer Sombra, I prefer Tracer. I think Genji just gets, gets got a little bit too much, but I think there are maps in which the Genji can be better. Probably personal preference a little bit. We saw uh, Dallas Houston, they were going back and forth on it. I also like the window. I think the window is a really good ultimate. Oh, he's just, he didn't even get any abilities off. He didn't get peeled for very well, but he also didn't drop any of his own abilities. He just died so fast. Really needs to get a bubble in that situation. Genji can act like a frontliner though, where Tracy just can't really do that. But that's sort of why I say like, you don't need a frontliner with this comp. You can just sort of play a defensive backline. I guess against certain comps, you would want a frontliner, maybe on attack on like escort maps. You want to be able to have that Genji to sort of step forward for you and Josiah can bubble aggressively. But against this composition that Philly's playing, you don't need a frontliner. Philly, Philly's comp with the Tracer Sombra needs to come into you. So you can play a Tracer and sort of pepper their backline and force them to put resources into their backline. Um, and then, you, as I said, like you, as long as you peel for your own backline, you're in a good spot. EMP? Oh, Prophet just gets solo to EMP. Philly win that fight. Genji hack can't, yeah. And that is the problem with Genji. If you get hacked as Genji, you just get kind of world starred. It was pretty dangerous for Soul to fucking, uh, for Soul to throw that, uh, that round. Historically, Philly have been very good on New Queen Street. Like, they had the record on it, right? So it's like, it was dangerous to take them here for, like, the mat that matters most. See, like, that's just, like, a classic example of, like, the defensiveness of this Zaya composition. And, you know, this goes into looking into the future when people have asked me, do you think Kiriko is going to be good? If there aren't major nerfs to the Zaya, Baptiste, Lucio stuff, I don't think any form of, like, Kiriko, Lucio, Diva, Tracer, Sombra dive, right? Let's say you trade the Zen Ana for, like, a more diving-friendly support of, so, like, Lucio, Kiriko. I don't know if you have enough damage to get through this, and I feel like it's going to be way too one-dimensional, and I don't think it's going to be that good. Where did World Star come from? Uh, Matt used to Matt used to say it, and I just think it's funny. And now I've started saying it. Like, look, you just double bubble your backliners as they dive, and then they just have enough protection.
That's crazy Prophet died there. It's a bad death. Smurf diff, dude, Smurf's so good. I played a bit of Bab last night, he does so much healing. I was playing Bab yesterday as well, and I could not believe in the Zaya mirror, like my, both of my our teams are playing Zaya. Like I used to really like playing Ana, but I think I realize now that Baptiste is just more consistent. And you just do so much healing and keeping your Zaya alive, like it's kind of crazy how much better Bap is, I think. Wow, that's a good bomb by Fury. Alright. This is some good dies, but once again, like, soldiers have ultimates now, so hopefully they should be able to win this one, right? Who's your MVP vote? We actually talked about it on Pie Chat. We went through all of our votes. Uh, I voted for proper for MVP. <laughs> I was surprised that all four of us on Platchat voted for proper for MVP. I thought somewhat, at least one of us would have, you know, like a Kevster or a Hanbin or even a Smurf or a Prophet, right? Like, but yeah. Just beat engage. Dude, Prophet is just existing in this back line. Y'all, thank you very much, really. I appreciate that. It was fun. No. Oh. Bum, 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 bum. Bump, 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 bump. Oh, wow. Was that a, that was, that must've been a last second bubble. Cause there's nothing else that would've saved him. Just didn't even show the bubble animation though. That's how late it came out. Ozzy cast his best duo. It was a lot of fun. Mitch is obviously very, very good at what he does. So it was, it was awesome to be able to cast him. He makes it easy and he makes it fun. I just enjoy casting in general a lot this, uh, this year. The grab into the transcendence. Oh, Carpe gets caught on the other side there. Oh, wow. Good play by Prophet. Oh, and they have the bot right now. Oh, the sleep. He was not ready for that. All right, Philly gets the bot back, but Solar in so much control. Like, Philly have not been able to get it close right now. Kind of, kind of surprised that Hardy was a nominee. Kind of forgot how good he actually was through all the memes. Yeah, like, I don't think a lot of people really... There was a couple of people on that list that people weren't really too happy. I think Hardy and Kai are, like, the two big ones. Like, they were good players this year, don't get me wrong. But were they the 10... In the list of 10 best players of the year? Probably not. But as I said, I've said this before. It doesn't really matter. Like, there are, like, five important ones that needed to be on the list. And they were all on the list. So... As long as no one was snubbed that had potential to win, right? That's for me. Good EMP by MN3. That should be a fight win for uh, Philly. Might be getting close to getting the checkpoint on this one. Dante Merritt. Yeah, Dante Merritt probably deserved to be on them all. Hawk over Kai. Yeah, I can see Hawk over Kai as well. Greasy Cleric. They have the 16 months. Good grab. B was good. Oh, good pulse bomb there from Carpe. Grab. Big bang. The classic. Oh, wow. Good kill. That's actually such an important kill to get the Ana. I'm surprised he didn't go for the mega pack there. All right, so that's checkpoint. Final fight territory. Soul don't have anything left in their... Uh, I guess there's no ultimates from either team. Philly having to give up so much space here. Soul playing it smart, not wanting to push the bot forward. Recognizing they'd rather take an advantageous fight here than like walk into the flank of uh, Philly. Oh, oh MN3's already had to go back here. No one really there to punish. Oh. 
Iris gets hacked. Instant lamp. Kabi gets profit. Smurf punishes though. Yeah, they don't think they have much left in the tank. Soul close out new queen. I think that was just a comp diff. I, th I think Soul's comp is just better than Philly's comp. And I think that's sort of something that we learned very heavily over this most recent weekend. Um, so, especially on a linear map with no high grounds. So we go to 2-2. Two, two. We're heading over to map 5. Provin needs to turn his aggression. I feel like he dies a lot. He's just always trying to do a lot, right? Um, but it's not bad. Like, that is one of the things that make him great is, like, when it pays off, it's crazy. But, yeah, he uh, he definitely is an aggressive player. I think that, like, creates a lot of the variance that has always existed within Soul Dynasty is Prophet is a very variable player. Right? Like, he definitely has times in which he gets too aggressive. Surely Fusion don't lose this. So we're going to see a mirror matchup, actually. Neither team willing to play the Zaya on this point. Both going to switch towards the Winston. Importantly, Soul gets the hack onto the mega, pay, uh, mega Pack first. So that gives them control over like this sort of area because Smurf will be able to bounce off of that and people are going to be able to bounce off of that. But Philly are actually going to be the team that goes first. Soul playing a very counter dive heavy and they just catch Bellis Rhea. Yeah, Bellis Rhea was just not ready for that. Vindame gets hacked though. Ooh, that was a good kill by Emma 3 and Carpe onto Vindame. That might give them an opportunity to get back into this fight. Smurf down, yeah. They don't have enough healing without the Brig. Why Monkey over Diva? The, the Eastern region has just preferred to play the Monkey over the Diva. Um, they like to play this Brig Anna style, which is kind of like a tried and tested way of playing the game since for a very, very long time. So it's probably more comfort than anything else. And like it probably worked for teams in scrim. So other people started playing it. But in the West, they actually prefer to play the D.Va because D.Va just murders Monkey. Like if you're a D.Va, oh, nice pulse by Prophet. If you are a D.Va and you follow the Winston in, you just shoot him in the ass, you drop your rockets and you just win the fight. Um, but yeah, it doesn't feel like the East likes to play that. Like I think the D.Va... Anna Zen, which Philly just played on New Queen Street, is actually potentially better than this Winston Anna Brig, except for maybe on maps with good high grounds, but that's not either of these last two maps, right? MN3 MP, Fitz MP. You can see them both setting up here. EMP Firth from Fitz gets aim god fix uh, is dead as well. Prophet's going kind of crazy. Just pulling the trigger first. Generally with Sombra, if you could pull the trigger first, you're going to be at a better spot. Because like that drew so many resources from Philly and then they couldn't dive either. Anna Zen is such a fun support duo. Yeah, until you get fucking murdered. Like Anna Zen can sometimes go terribly wrong, especially against like a really good Winston who's able to switch, uh, split the healing from the Anna and the Zen. It it gets very difficult. Like if the Winston bubbles your Zen off very effectively, and then you as Anna you can't need them or heal them, like you just fall over. Uh, so against like really good Sombra's Winstons, you just die. Oh no, no Winston! Oh wow, he got booped up and then slept, and then the EMP comes out while. Vi oh nah. This was a really good counter dive by Soul Dynasty. They dealt with the Nano, they dealt with the EMP really well. And that's going to be expensive for Philly to lose. Especially if they get staggered hit. Fix to drops the rally so they don't die. But that's not going to feel great. MN3 goes Widow? He's is going to have to go crazy if he's going to win. Oh. oh, you got to hit a shot eventually. Otherwise, it's just... That would have been a crazy shot if he hit it, but yeah. Unable to find the value of the winner. I don't hate the switch because it could potentially just win them the fight for free and they could snowball off of that, but yeah, it's, it's unlikely. Until you get world starred. I did think about saying world starred, but now you guys have made me self-conscious about saying world starred. I actually like don't like saying the word world starred as well. It just comes to my oh, it just comes to my brain every now and then. Um because it doesn't make sense. People don't know what world starred means. 
I feel like the context is there if you think about it, but yeah. There's a pause in your sentence, yeah. Do you think there will ever be a main support MVP? Not really. Not unless that main support becomes a more impactful role. Oh. Swell start. <laughs> Are we old for not World Star? Yeah. Because I remember Matt saying it was like some old TV show that used to be called like World Star or something like that. I, I don't remember exactly the context, but I, Matt used to like saying it. And now I picked it up like a couple of months later. All right. So I feel like at the first cap and getting a pretty good second. I think it was a TMZ thing. Yeah, maybe. World Star was a Facebook page that featured people fighting each other. Yeah, something like that. Something like that is there, there's context there of like it's an old meme. Ah, there you go. So it's a live post fighting video. Ah. 4chan level old. Oh god. What have I what have I exposed people to? Oh good, pulse bomb. No, it's gonna get healed up actually instantly. Fitz gets very low. They're just gonna make sure to not give up the point. Oh god, what did I just say, Philly? Like, that's such a bad point to give up. Now all of a sudden this fight is not good for you. And Soul can just disengage. People in Baltimore still yell world star when someone's getting the tar beaten out of themselves. See, it's still relevant. I'm not old. Okay, double EMP. What are, let's get a look. Carpe's hacked. Backline gets hacked. Way better ult from MN3. Gets both the backliners. Oh my god. Iris is alive and he just fucking dominated Bellas Ria. I almost said world star. Um, Bellas Rhea just got rolled. Uh, and with that, that's a, like a bad sleep to lose to, uh, for Bellas Rhea because that was an expensive fight. They did get the point back, but like, think about that whole fight. If Philly had kept control, they'd be at like 90% now. Like that was all prepping up to one fight. And now you can see like Sol is doing the, the opposite of that right as well. Like they're just controlling the point for a lot longer. They're willing to commit resources, commit ultimates to make sure they stay on the point. And now they're ticking up, they're ticking up. And all of a sudden this fight is so advantageous for them. Even if they use all their ultimates, it's still a good fight for them. Bellasria gets hacked. Dude, Bellasria is just straight up not having a good time. Oh no, Bellasria. Yeah, this was not a great round for Bellas Rhea. Oh, that, now they're chasing down Fitz. I don't know if that was worth it for them. I guess it was fine. All right, they got the touch. m 3 is about to get this EMP. Probably the player to watch right now. Uh, I don't think he needed to go for a hack there. I think he needed to get the EMP up. Oh, it was actually a pretty good EMP in the end. Ah, uh, too late. Little, too little, too late. Soul is just better in the Winston mirror. Uh, it feels like the only time in which it didn't look great for them was on King's Row. But Soul Dynasty crushing the Philadelphia Fusion's hopes and dreams with a 3-2 victory. Uh, this was, you know, this was more for seeding than anything. Uh, and it was playing on stage, so it was a bit of fun. That's why you got a little bit of profit out of there. Um, but yeah, it, it was good to check out both these teams. I hadn't watched the last couple of maps of that one. Uh, so we'll see as time goes on. Neither of these teams are playing in the play-ins, but they will be in LA for the playoffs. So that will be exciting to see when we'll finally, hopefully get to see the East taking on the West in a LAN environment. It's going to be lit. Keep an eye out for that one.
We have the West matches coming up this weekend, and I'm going to be watching some of the West matches over this uh, from this weekend throughout the week. Uh, I think next one on the docket is going to be Florida Mayhem versus Atlanta Rain. I haven't really watched both of those teams too much, so we're going to deep dive into that one. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys next time.